why do you think it's important that we at least know the humanness, the humanity of the Buddha? I think that's a very, very good question. And I think I can think of a good answer to that. In fact, so far, one person who read the book told me, you're undermining Buddhism. You're turning the Buddha into an ordinary person. He was an extraordinary person. Well, I agree with that completely, and I say so in the book. But if we praise him out of existence, if we praise him out of humanity, then we lose touch with him. So, for example, in the Christian tradition, um, Jesus was a god. We human beings can never become like a god. But in Buddhism, the whole idea is the Buddha became, if you like, head and shoulders above us, but our job is to emulate his experience. You might say he didn't so much want us to worship him, he wanted us to try to become like him. So the fact that the Buddha was a human being is actually very, very important. And the fact that in some respects he was like us physically and sometimes how he behaved, what differentiated him from us was what was going on in here, the depth of his understanding, the, the, the broadness of his vision. That's what made him different physically. He may not have been very different from us at all. And the fact that he was human is important because we're human too. Therefore, we have the opportunity or the potential to become like him. Now, nowadays, uh, meditation is very popular and that's a very good trend. But I think we need to remember that there are many different types of meditation. And one type of meditation is what you call the anusati. In fact, the Buddha talks about this meditation a lot. So we've got, for example, sila anusati. The Buddha thought that it might be a good idea every now and then to quietly contemplate the good that you have done. <laughs> so the Buddha talked about uh, marana anusati, the recollection on death. He said, Doing that all of the time couldn't, wouldn't be very helpful. But every now and then, reflecting on the fact of your own mortality, that one day you won't be here. Perhaps also that one day your loved ones won't be here. This may help you to see things in a more balanced perspective. They may also help to be a... Um, so that it's much less a shock when death approaches. But one of the things he also talked about was Buddha Anusati, reflecting upon the virtues of the Buddha, which I happen to think is a very useful and, and pleasant meditation, sitting down and thinking of the good qualities of the Buddha. Now, I think in, in my book it provides a great deal of uh, resources and ideas and examples and stories that somebody wanting to do that meditation could use in order to contemplate the Buddha. So here we have a whole book with very carefully uh, um, assembled sources giving from what book, from what page it is. Everywhere in the book I have given references so that if you feel that I've exaggerated or not quite correct on that, the reference is there, you can look it up in the Tipitika. So, to return to that subject, I think that seeing the Buddha as human gives us some connection with him and reminds us that it is possible for us to become like him. That is, wiser, kinder, uh, more in touch with reality and ultimately to become completely free by attaining the highest stage, the goal of the Buddhist life, which is to attain Nirvana.